Welcome back, True Seeker. It is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. I want to go over some of the top stories from today and in recent days. And of course, yesterday you had the eclipse, but also the big focus on the conclusion to the men's March Madness tournament with the championship between UConn and Purdue. And again, just to see how perfectly scripted these things are. UConn yesterday picked up their 71st all-time tournament win. And for years, we've talked about 71 in the March Madness tournament. Go back to 2017. Tournament was also in Phoenix that year. And pointed out why UNC was going to beat Gonzaga, why it was going to be all about 71 before the tournament even began. Needless to say, UNC beat Gonzaga, and they beat them with 71 points. This time, UConn's the champion picking up their 71st tournament win. And notice, from the school's establishment anniversary, April 21st, to the championship win, April 8th, 353 days later, which is the 71st prime number. And why does 71 matter so much to March Madness? Because in Gematria, March Madness equates to 71. It also equates to 46, and you might have saw the stat they put on the screen right at the start of the second half. The stat read, UConn has won 45 straight games when leading at halftime. And, of course, they were leading at halftime. They went on to win their 46th straight game while leading at halftime while also picking up the 71st win in the tournament. And years ago, we were beginning to observe how these rituals played out when you ran the alphabetic order forwards and backwards, how the numerical value of the word corresponded perfectly with the ritual. And we've been talking about these numbers over and over with the tournament the entire time we've been here. Let's also not forget that Joseph Lieberman, the Connecticut senator, died right before UConn won in the Elite Eight. Knows how Joseph Lieberman equals 71. They ended up the tournament with 71 wins. But you run it the other way, Joseph Lieberman's 82, like how he died at age 82. And then UConn's game, right after his death, they scored 82 points perfect rituals um as for UConn outscoring their opponents by 140 points the final game was in State Farm Stadium State Farm equals 140 you run it the other way State Farm's 103 like how the other year you had Patrick Mahomes who does the State Farm ads win the Super Bowl in that building but he came in to that building with a 10 and 3 playoff record a lot like 103 State Farm Again, reminding how important the advertisers are to the script as well. Last year, it was Coke running the Hashim to beat UConn ad through the whole tournament. Hashim to beat equals 120. Last year was UConn's 120th season. They outscored their opponents by 120 points. So, same old, same old. I'm sure next year I'll roll around. We'll be talking about the exact same things. And speaking of the same old, same old, 2017, we, we said the Carolinas were going to dominate that year, and they did. The men's North Carolina team won, and the women's South Carolina team won. And that year, the big controversy in basketball was the Carolinas lost the All-Star game because the NBA deemed that they were bigoted towards transgender athletes and transgender people in general because um, the Carolinas – wasn't favoring the idea of transgender people being able to choose what restroom they use. So who went on to win the tournament that year? The South Carolina Gamecocks, and all throughout the tournament, the media referred to them as the Lady Cox. The Lady Cox win the tournament after the controversy with the bathroom bill. And what we were pointing out back then, this is how we saw that that whole year was going to be about 71. Bathroom bill, 71. Same cipher as March Madness. So now this year, South Carolina wins again. And the, now you got the, uh, the the women's coach of South Carolina coming out. And she says that, you know, if a, if a guy identifies as a, as a woman, then he should be able to play women's sports. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to say I identify as an 18-year-old freshman female next year and see if I can get on the Gamecock squad. Not really, but I mean – Apparently, that's what she said, so why not? 
And she made those remarks right before she won the championship. And, and by the way, forwards and backwards, you know, her team got the 38th win and the Hawkeyes stayed on 34 wins. So Hawkeyes season finishes on 34 wins. South Carolina gets the 38th win. And some people always want to say, like, how do you know that forwards and backwards, it matters both ways? Like, well, because we've been documenting it about a gazillion times over for a decade. Um, how about this photo right here? You guys probably saw this story. It's big and buzzing today. Winona Judd's daughter arrested on indecent exposure charge. Uh, wh- wh- why does Fox News got to get that pose in there? This is what drives me nuts about the society we live in. Uh, again, our nation's capital is known as the Masonic city, secret societies. You have these people doing these secret hand poses in front of the camera all the time, showing they're in the club and somehow, some way, you know, the people of the world, like my sister, who I like to pick on, cause she'd say, Oh, she was probably just posing like that. It's like, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. And again, here's the other thing. You know, her 27-year-old daughter gets busted on 4-5. How many times have I talked about 27 and 45 with rituals, right? How many times? You know, ritual, 27 forwards, 45 in reverse. Sometimes the 81s factor in as well, but 27-45. Her 27-year-old daughter in trouble on 4-5. And remember, that was the same day that this headline broke. Actor Cole Brings Plenty found dead on 4-5. He was 27 years old. It was the anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death at 27. This young man disappeared in Lawrence, Kansas, before his body was found on 4-5. And and if you missed my uh, decode on this from days ago, uh, again, the show that he was a part of from when it came out to when he disappeared Came out December 18, 2022. He disappeared March 31st, exactly 67 weeks later. Plus the date 331 is a lot like 331, the 67th prime. But of course, human sacrifice, blood sacrifice, both 67, like soul, like they're collecting souls, like they sold their soul or somebody in their family sold their soul. In the case of this young man who, you know, he was a... He was an actor, but not a big name. He had a very interesting name. Cole Brings Plenty. His uncle has a more prominent acting career. So is this more on the uncle? I mean, it's hard to say, but it's obvious that something very sinister is going on in the world of entertainment where these sat aim patterns persist literally day after day. I mean, <laughs> you, you, if you went through all of the coverage I've had of celebrity death in 67, I mean, that would make a really long documentary. Hundreds of videos on this exact same pattern. Okay. Uh, CJ Snare, again, I covered this the other day, but just to make sure everyone saw this, announced dead on 4-7. He was the lead singer of Firehouse, which equals 47, like his artist name, CJ Snare, equals 47. It's not the day he died, though. Uh, Again, we talk about 47 in rock music a lot. You know, some of your most famous band names equal 47, including Led Zeppelin. When I was a kid coming up in the 90s, the city on the 47th parallel, Seattle, was the epicenter of rock music in the world. And, of course, practically every singer from every popular band died at a young age, including Kurt Cobain. And and this man, even though his death was announced on April 7th, he actually died April 5th, the anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death. And both of these guys got their record deals at about the same time in history. Obviously, this man, C.J. Snare, got to live a lot longer. But... In light of him dying on the anniversary of Kurt Cobain and Lane Staley and the numerous other people who've died on April 5th, High Ritual Day. Again, again, Kurt Cobain dead at 27 on 4-5, the ritual pattern. But this man died on his 114th day of his age, tying in with the Gematria Kurt Cobain. And, you know, anyone who who has a little bit of their memory left is automatically going to think of Kurt Cobain when they realize this guy died on April 5th. They'll probably think of Lane Staley as well. Again, the two Seattle rock stars who died on the same April 5th day. And then um, more recently, it was Sean Smith, also a a Seattle musician who died on April 5th. But yeah, RIP CJ Snare. And then I I covered this as well. There's a lot of things I covered about this earthquake, but I want to make sure everyone sees this latest piece that's super important about the earthquake with the epicenter on number 45's golf course, Donald Trump. 
<laughs> I know it's United States of Amnesia. Who can remember April 5th? That was last week, but it did happen. Reportedly an earthquake with the epicenter on Trump's golf course. And I'd encourage you to watch the longer stream I did on that. But Trump had a, a tournament there for LIV Golf, July 29th. From the day that tournament began to the earthquake was exactly 88 weeks. Again, that's the big Trump number, 88. Trump's 88, like energy, like weapon. Again, the course opened when Trump was 58, the winner of the 58th presidential election, when nuclear weapon equals 58, and then the day it quaked. From that day to December 31st, those are the last 271 days of the year, which is the 58th prime, 58 and 88, huge numbers with Trump's history. Again, Oprah equals 58. She interviewed Trump in 88 about being president someday. So many examples of 58 and 88 coming together. By the way, 88 has a connection back to earthquake as well. But here, here's the piece. The guy who won that, that tournament from 88 weeks earlier was Henrik Stenson. And notice the earthquake was on his 48th birthday. And again, they said it was a 4.8 magnitude quake and Donald Trump equals 48. But yeah, it just really makes you go like, what in the world is going on? I'm going to have to look more into Sweden. He's a Swedish golfer. I'm going to have to look into the history of Sweden's weapons program. Um, but yeah, you just know that's not an accident. The, the guy who won the tournament that started 88 weeks earlier just happened to turn 48 that day. I mean, it's, it's not an accident. And, and it speaks to everything we've been talking about. Rigged sports, rigged news, huge rituals syncing up sports with uh, uh, elected officials. Same thing we've been laying out for a decade. It's been going on for longer than that. It's just when I finally caught on to it. Okay, and then just an another example. Pat Zachary, former athlete, dead at 71. That's not the typical life expectancy. It's longer than that for the average American. But consider, you know, he's dead right at the start of baseball season. They announce his death. All the media announced his death on April 6th, 4-6, that he had died on 4-4, April 4th, you know? And the one other thing that, that stands out is you see the, the one eighteen forty six. Look at March Madness. This guy wasn't a basketball player. He was a baseball player, but the connection is sports. March Madness is one eighteen and 46, and the big star for Purdue who lost in the championship, uh, Zach Eady, look how he spells his name. Let me pull him up here. Zachary. Same way same way the, the baseball player did. Zachary. You know, my name's Zachary. So I, this is an abnormal spelling right here. Typically, Zachary is Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y. Sometimes you'll see an E-R-Y. I don't know. With, with just Zachary? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. These might be the only two guys I can think of with, with Zachary spelled like that. But yeah, also dead at 71, you know, and I, I was just making the point about March Madness. So his name is 118 and 46 like March Madness. He, he announced dead the day of the final four. Four is associated with death, dead at 71. So yeah, RIP to this man as well. And, and again, this is the stuff we point out year after year. Baseball player, baseball season getting underway. And, and the other thing too, if you're new here, not only is his name 44 and 46, but words like execution are 44 and 46. Sacrifice, again, is 46. Genesis 4, 6 begins with the sacrifice. Connecticut's also got that 46. In light of them being one of the most dominant March Madness teams. And uh, what just happened to Joseph Lieberman. Hard for me to find much sympathy, though, for a guy like Joe Lieberman, you know. Too bad he wasn't a member of the 27 Club. There'd probably be more people alive today because he was a major war hawk and major proponent of the unnecessary wars based in lies after 9-11. So Joe Lieberman, you know, not a good guy. All right, that, this story today, James and Jennifer Crumbly get the prison sentences of 10 to 15 years. Um, now, remember... That everything about this shooting was by the numbers and it was perfectly synced with the attorney general. I mean, we covered it all the day of, I mean, it just couldn't have been any more by the numbers as so often these made for, for TV stories are that are about to, again, if you don't understand it, the, the propaganda that's contrived every day, which oftentimes is the school shootings 
It is to persuade people to give up their rights and liberties. And you start looking in these stories, they don't really make any sense. It seems like every time they got one of these school shooters, you know, well, anyway, just following the numbers. Look at this. Today is 4-9, right? 4-9. Big gun control number. That's that's the agenda here. Gun control. And a story like this meant to scare any parent who'd even think about getting their child a, a weapon. But from Ethan Crumbly, the, the, the teen who was the shooter, from his sentencing on December 8th to today is exactly 123 days later. And from the shooting November 30th, 2021 to today is exactly 123 weeks later. And what do we know about one, two, three? It's like we're counting. But again, we call it the conspiracy number. And no doubt that is what the case is here. Manufactured news for an agenda by a very repetitive code. And in light of the max sentence potentially being 15 years, Ethan Crumbly was 15 years old when he reportedly shot up the school. Remember, gun equals 15. And you might recall part of that story was that the star football player of the team who was killed wore 42, another gun number. And then you might recall the Michigan Wolverines wore a 42 on their jersey, or it might have been their helmet. I can't remember if it was their helmet or their jersey, one of the two. But they wore a 42 in tribute to that football player, and then they won their big game with 42 points while wearing the 42 patch right after the shooting. And we, we've seen this before. The, the mass shooting becomes, you know, part of the sports ritual. That, that happened up here the other year when the Seahawks um, lost in Super Bowl 49. Uh, we had the Marysville Pilchuck High School shooting perfectly synced at the Super Bowl. And the Seahawks are wearing the patch for that high school shooting all throughout the season. And um, gun control. Gun control 49. The Seahawks ended up losing in Super Bowl 49 at the goal line in the perfect script. Where again, Russell Wilson's 21st pass was intercepted by number 21 with 21 seconds left on the down. Second and one on the date. Two slash one for Tom Brady's 21st playoff win as he became in four and two in Super Bowls over the 42nd state. All right. Uh, this thing that's in the news today, uh, you know, again, legal jargon. I, I, I got legal jargon. It's just, it's so annoying trying to read. I'll, I'll even just read it and just, but here's what I want to point out about this. This is in the news today, how the, the Supreme Court's likely going to overturn this, and it has something to do with protecting the environment. And the case is called Chevron USA versus Natural Resource Defense Council. Look at what day it was decided. It was decided on George Orwell's birthday, June 25th in 1984. Okay, so that's the first thing. It's like, wow, George Orwell's birthday, 1984. And it's 40 years later. They're saying it's going to be overturned in the first half of this year. Chevron is the big name in that 40. Remember United States equals 40 U S equals 40. When you spell out 40 as a word, it equals 84. Like United States of America equals 84. There's a big pattern with 40 and 84. So overturning this decision from 84, 40 years later, but here, here I just want to read this. And again, this is why you got to go to law school to even understand legal jargon, but it's just like, it's like, what are we even saying here? Chevron USA Inc. versus Natural Resources Defense Council Incorporated 467 U.S. 837 1984 was a landmark decision of the United States Supreme Court that set forth the legal test for when U.S. federal courts must defer to a government agency's interpretation of a law or statute. The decision articulated a doctrine known as Chevron deference. Chevron deference consists of a two-part test that is different Def deferential to government agencies. First, whether Congress has spoken directly to the precise issue at question. And second, whether the agency's answer is based on a permissible construction of the statute. <laughs> it's just like, what am I even reading? I don't know. It just sounds like a whole bunch of nonsense. But that's the way, this is the thing about language I want you guys to think about. Just how many levels there are to language and why things are the way they are and why they make it so you have to go to a very intense level of education to understand legal language and why you get a legal contract that's just all these words that just sounds like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. But if you actually go to school and learn how to read the mumbo jumbo, then you can make sense of it. 
but it, it's difficult and it's time consuming. And it's also at the same time, what I want to say is it's unnecessary. It's done this way on purpose to create like a class system in the world we live in and, and a way to take advantage of people. It's like it, only evil people would even ever come up with this type of way of making complicated language so that hardly anyone could understand it. That's why all this stuff just needs to be burned to the ground. And then just to see it's all just used for ritual anyway. As we see, literally every single thing the Supreme Court does is a perfect ritual. Like a, like a big game is being played with us. And again, think about it. It's being played. The game is being played by people who are in secret societies, who know things that you don't know who are more highly educated than you, likely because they were born also into these ranks. They just have more understanding of everything. Language, the secret numerical code behind the language, and everything's just this big game. At the end of the day, this might as well all be for naught. Why, why do we need a government that just, uh, you know, just performs high ritual every day? Oh, okay. Time to perform the ritual with this decision from George Orwell's birthday in 1984. <laughs> Again, if you guys missed all the work on, on the overturning of Roe versus Wade, you should go back and revisit. It was the same ritual they did when they put Roe versus Wade in place. Perfect number system. Perfect number codes, same codes, so repetitive. Just like we talk about March Madness in the same numbers every year. Look at the Supreme Court rituals in the same number patterns year after year. Okay, yesterday, April 8th, big headline. Uh, Pope Francis and the Catholic Church came out and said that the, you know they weren't big fans of uh, this whole transgender thing. You know, you're, you're either born a boy or a girl. And then the media, some people in the media said, oh, my God, that's so old fashioned. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess sometimes old fashioned is just the truth, isn't it? Because isn't that pretty much the way it is? I, I know there are some rare exceptions where, like, I think the words her hermaphrodite, I think, if I'm not mistaken, where, like, you're, you're born with some features of both. It's like a rare thing. But um, hopefully I'm getting the right word for that, but. Yeah, look at the day that they just have to create the device of propaganda, right? They have to do it on April 8th, date that's written 8 slash 4 the majority of the world. And as we know, United States of America, 84, the Catholic Church, 84, the Jesuit Order, 84, Jesuit, 84, this Pope, the first Jesuit Pope, born on date, a date with 84 numerology, the founder of the Jesuits, Ignatius of Loyola, died 84 days from his birthday, so on and so forth. But again, the Jesuits are the ultimate divide and conquer gang. They know that they've, you know, they they've. It's the, the, the as the Jesuits can as the Jesuit Pope condemns transgender on this day. Uh, this whole uh, culture that's been created of transgenderism has had the Jesuit fingerprints all uh, on it the whole time as we've been documenting. So again, they just know how to play humanity. They know how to they know how to herd people, pit people against each other. They're the ultimate divide and conquer gang. And that's why this had to be the headline on April 8th. You know, the, the day that uh, part of the U.S. experiences darkness in the daytime. You know. But yeah, everything is just such a joke. And uh, that emphasis on gender theory here, just to make a point, emphasis on gender theory. Look at the numbers. Gender theory, 144, 72, 54. Aren't those the same numbers as Jesuit order? Of course, President Biden, who's up there, is also 144, 72. And the first Jesuit pope became the first Jesuit pope on the 72nd day of the year. And Joe Biden became senator-elect in 72 and lost his wife and daughter. And then he lost his son when he was 72, perfectly synced with the pope. But yeah, just every day, just playing games with humanity. Same number of rituals day after day. And then uh, one other thing, Judy Mikovits, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, her and uh, what's the other guy's name, Mickey Willis, they had that film that went viral and got all that attention. Then it was banned all over social media. Um, Jesse from the Missing Link Live, I'm going to do a stream again with him April 12th. Uh, 
he just had on Judy Mikovits, and I heard her say in the interview she was doing with him that her husband was murdered. And so I just want to go back and look at her husband's death. There's actually an article written about how she's a crackpot and her husband died from COVID-19 because he wasn't vaccinated. Um, but she says that, no, he he was murdered. So she didn't elaborate on it. And um, but so anyway, I went back and looked and I, there, there's some weird things about this. Uh, he died December 1st, 12, one, remember one, two, one was an important number in the time of the pandemic. Uh, the first case uh, of coronavirus confirmed in the world outside of mainland China was January 21st, one, two, one, and then Sirius XM immediately made channel one twenty one, the full time COVID channel. And we were pointing out then that it went with the revelation theme that was going on because revelation equates to 121. And that's why the pandemic was declared 666 days after the first COVID simulation. Of course, 666, the mark which you must have if you want to buy or sell from the story in Revelation. And of course, you had to participate and wear the mask one letter off from Mark if you wanted to buy or sell in a lot of places. And then we all know what the gematria is behind vaccination. It has that triple six. But um, his death was 121 days before her birthday on 12-1. So I thought, hmm, that's weird. And as we also know, blood sacrifice has that Gematria 121. And she didn't say I sacrificed my husband, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully assume that wasn't the case. But then the other thing that, that jumped out is she has a beef with Anthony Fauci because she does come from the medical world and she is highly educated. And notice he died at 83 as well. We know the song Murder by Numbers came out in 83. The song about how killing is the sport of the elected when murder equals 83. But um, his birthday was July 26th. So that means he died on his 129th day of his age. And 129 is 201 in base eight counting. And again, she has a beef with Anthony Fauci. Remember, Anthony Fauci on January 10th, 2017, he was at a pandemic preparedness conference at Jesuit Georgetown. Georgetown equals 129. The Jesuit order equals 201. Again, 129 is 201 in base eight counting. Event 201 was the pandemic simulation right before it all popped off. But yeah, died on his 129th day of being 83 years old. And Anthony Fauci back then made his prediction from Georgetown, and now he's an employee at Georgetown. That happened about a year back. But uh... Yeah, I, I do wonder about Judy Mikovits, though. I mean, she keeps plugging Donald Trump. She, like... She, she's plugging all the Jesuits, RFK Jr., Trump. So you just never know. And she did get to go viral at the beginning of the pandemic. And, and what I'll tell you is that our, had our knowledge and information gone viral at the beginning of the pandemic, it'd be a different world. You know, people would actually know what's up. Remember what we said at the beginning of the pandemic. We had everything laid out before it happened. We called like every damn near everything about the pandemic before it happened. When the lockdowns would start, when the thing would end. Again, and I put out my book in the middle of 2020. We were talking about before then, but I had the book written by the middle of 2020 saying why they would wind down their pandemic as soon as the year of the tiger came around. And we were on that stuff from back in March, April of 2020. And... um yeah, I had everybody known what we, we we had known and observed. People would really understand what's going on and how big of a game's being played with us. The 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 crews that she runs with, you know, the the Dell Big Trees, Dell Big Tree, it, whoever his mod is for his uh for his show, literally blocked me in their chat from sharing the information about the Jesuits and the patterns with two hundred one and fifty six. It's like, hmm, okay. Okay, I guess you don't want your audience to know about that information. And, and again, that's why all these people I have an eyebrow up about, you know. So. But yeah, I, I just had to look into that since she said that her husband was murdered. All right. Uh, 
so we we got the uh we got the typical um trolls here. You're such a fraudster rat snitch. Uh <laughs> the middle finger. You know, the, the funny thing about the guy who, who left this comment, th- this guy spends his days harassing and trolling and like literally snitching on me. Like what 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 is it? Just 24-7 projection over there, buddy? A snitch is when you when, when you try to get other people in trouble. You know, isn't that what you're doing every day? You're like, you're like, I'm going to get your Patreon taken down. I'm going to get sweet lady fired. I'm going to get, you know, I mean, and the thing is you're, you're, you're making stuff up. So it's just, again, you are down in the, for all I know, you are a member of the church of Satan down there in San Francisco, but literally take a look in the mirror, take a deep breath and, and realize who the snitch is. I'm not doing anything to you. No, I don't owe you money. Uh, you know, what do I owe you money for? Nothing. All right. A- anyway. One less troll in the chat. Yeah, no, that, that guy literally is insane. He literally is insane. All right, is there any other stories in the last few days I should have covered that I missed? That's a good point. That's a good point because, yeah, the last back-to-back winner was Florida, and and Lieberman was the vice presidential uh, vice presidential uh, candidate on the ticket with Al Gore when they conceded in 2000 to Bush. Yeah, you're, you're, you're probably a million percent correct about that connection right there. Al Gore and Lieberman, who went along with the obvious script of the rig selection of George W. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. He'll he'll be back under a, an alt account in no time though. So Someone says, "How does the whole Bible connect to Gematria?" Well, uh, again, just look at the historical time period of English Bibles being printed, the Bible being numbered, the English language being standardized, the calendar coming out, the Jesuits Again, you take this knowledge and go through the Bible, and I guarantee you there's thousands of discoveries to be made in the Bible that people haven't connected the dots on. But you'll you'll just see why. We're always talking about death in 46, because sacrifice equals 46, and Genesis 46 is about sacrifice. Uh, again, Genesis 3, 2, 2 is a great example right at the beginning of the Bible. It mentions the tree of life, which is the physical model for Kabbalah, which has three pillars and 22 paths. And both in the King James Version and in the New International Version, the verse adds up to 322. Despite the different wording in in each version, you still get the same 322 value. And uh, again, so many other things, too. It's just like um, how they used the, the, the revelation code all throughout the pandemic, where you had to have the... The thing not far off from the mark if you wanted to buy or sell or participate in society. Um, the, the the numbers, you know, just like even New Testament, 40, 40, here, let me write out New Testament to make a point. Again, in Protestant Bibles, then the Bible ends with the 66th book and it ends with the New Testament. But whether it's Protestant or Catholic, the New Testament begins with the 42 generations to Jesus. So New Testament's 42 and 66. The first book is Math U. Math is 42 and 66. Um, Math U is 27. Like there's 27 books in the New Testament. So uh, again, there, there are so many different things about the Bible. A lot of the numbers, though, they gain their significance in the verses. And let's not forget this either. You know, one of the biggest numbers to the whole thing, the, the whole thing with the pandemic was very biblical. The Holy Bible equals 201, you know, just like the Jesuit order equates to 201. And event 201 was on October 18th, 1018, like how in the Bible, it's Luke 
10, 18, where Satan comes to earth. And again, Satan's associated with 666 and the sister simulation Cladex was 666 days before the pandemic was declared. So, yeah, uh, but before before I die, there w- I will make a point to go through the Bible and really try. I, th- I mean, that's how you could really advance the work. If you took the time to go through the entire Bible, and it would be smart to go through the New International Version and the King James Version, two most popular versions of the Bible, and Again, it would be the way to advance the research because we, we would we would build on our our understanding of numbers that are used repetitively tremendously. Anytime I, I put dedicate time to studying the Bible and certain numbers in there, I, I gain more about where these patterns are coming from. Um, All right, just for just for entertainment's sake, uh, here I dropped the link. If you've if you've been banned in Streamyard for being a troll, I don't know how to unban in Streamyard. I, I think it's permanent once you get banned. So if you've been banned in there and you want a second chance, you just need to make a new Google account. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get back in there. Um, so that's like you, Cutch. You've been banned because you've come on and been a moron. You can't shut up. You can't listen. You just keep blabbling, babbling the same points. Like this troll right here, 9-11, no planes. No, no. That person hasn't made any credible argument in any way, shape, or form. All of you guys who sit here and say that this isn't real are just morons. I mean, that's just the bottom line. That's a provable fact that you guys are morons. You know? Uh, again, when we're teaching about death in the same patterns over and over and you guys are saying that this is some kind of fraud here like like, like this again you know just this kid well, one of many examples we could point to but just from the other day what you guys are doing is a disservice to to a young person like this who just got murdered right we've been educating about this pattern of ritual death in 67 or i have i say we because i like to speak of us as a community but I've been educating about this pattern of ritual death in 67 for over a decade now. And I mean, this is just so blatant and, and, and always showing the same thing, how that you can always see that what really happened to these entertainers by going back to the work that they're remembered for. He's connected to this show. He disappears exactly 67 weeks after, and then is found dead. No, the, the only person who's a fraud is the person who comes here and says, this means nothing that makes you a fraud. I could sit here all day and go through the thousand examples I have of this. And for anyone to come here and and try and and dismiss this, it makes you complicit in this. It makes you part of this evil. You know, the the gas station troll, you know, he's he's allowing everything that I do to provoke him. When I when I when I announced the news about Sweet Lady, he went on and did a live stream immediately about how people need to kill Sweet Lady and and the child inside of her. I mean, that's a psychopath. So if you're riding with that, if you're endorsing somebody like that, that makes you a weirdo. You know, the the fact that that guy feels that way, that he needs to go online, and start venting right away about how he wants to kill sweet lady. I mean, that's crazy. Nobody's done anything in this community negative to cuts. He met a woman in this community and they had a little romantic relationship and then she broke up with him. And now he's just going crazy every day, blaming everyone here. I mean... Sorry, that's someone that's, you know, not right in the head. So, well, I don't know if that's true, Kayla. If you guys don't know Kayla Decode Talker, you should definitely check out her t- channel as well. By the way, Kayla, ignore the trolls. I-, I saw that they were targeting you today. Maybe you're not even aware. If so, keep it that way. But you might start seeing more trolls on your X page if you haven't already noticed. Feel free to hit the block button. Um, yes. Yeah, exactly. We talk about that a lot. Uh, it's Genesis 6, 6, where God regrets making man. And it's interesting because, you know, Protestant Bibles are 66 books in length and mankind is 66. And yeah, uh, go back and look at older work, but that number and patterns come up in, in new stories in the past as well. So.
All right. Well, we haven't had anyone join the stream, and uh, I'll give it. I'll give it a few more minutes. Again, the link is in the chat. If anybody wants to come in, it, it, like if anybody seriously wants to come in and bring a debate that this is bullshit, I'll entertain that. But you have to bring a, a good argument. It can, we already know what cuts would come on here and say. He'd say it's not a real gematria because it's not Hebrew, and we'd be like, that's a dumb argument because we've never said that it is Hebrew. We've said that the code of letters and numbers, yes, does come from Hebrew. I've wrote, I've written a book called Letters and Numbers. In the opening chapter of that book, I show parallels between the Hebrew language and the English language. But uh, again, anyone with the brain can understand how if something started thousands of years ago in another alphabet, and then you know ancient Greek came along and it also had the numerical code, so another language implemented the idea of words and numbers. It's easy to understand how other languages could also implement the idea. I mean, this is just a logical thought. And then if you say, well, where's the proof that there's a numerical sequence behind the language? I'd say, well, what do you think we've been doing for the last 10 years documenting all this day in and day out? I mean, uh, again, there's a reason that some people in their 40s, the, 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 the highest job they've attained in their life is, is the gas station. Um. So here's one of the trolls that hangs out with, with cuts. So we'll see if he can do a, a better argument. Okay. Ari Gold, uh, y- your chance to uh, bring the argument. Hi, Zach. How are you? Uh, uh, d- just don't even start that way. I know you're one of the trolls that hangs out with cuts. So just get to the point. What's the point you want to make? No, I'm just saying that you should debate him. He, he really wants to debate you. And again, we brought him on here and he doesn't debate. He just talks and, and just keeps circling to the same point. So, I mean, he's not a reasonable person to talk to. He doesn't have a good argument. And I just I just ruined his argument. I just addressed exactly what he would say and why he's wrong. Here, what, what, so here, let's do it again in case you weren't listening. So Cuts' argument is that this isn't real gematria because it's not Hebrew. But again, how's that a real argument when gematria is the practice of coding numbers into words? And it started in Hebrew, and then it went into ancient Greek, and obviously it went into English. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to routinely show day after day the numerical structure behind the rituals that are encoded in the words of the story. So, okay, so, I mean, what, what, so what, 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 we all know what he'd say. He'd go, he'd go no, because it's not Hebrew. <laughs> it's like, okay, guts, this is a dumb argument. So if this uh, worked, then wouldn't you have picked the Yukon and not uh, uh, fucking Arizona? That That's a dumb argument, isn't it? No, I'm just asking you. If you had it all down... Yeah, this is a dumb argument. Put... See, this is a troll's argument. No, this is a troll's argument. I'm not argument. starting an argument. First of all, here, all right, hold on, troll. First of all, we identified before the tournament began, way before the tournament began, why Yukon had the narrative to win. But all of the media was on Yukon. Now, first of all, also, how many tournaments have I nailed dead on? I mean, years I've had all four of the final four perfect. I've had both teams right at the point. So the, already your argument is defeated. Because if, if that's your argument, you can just say, well, all the years we got it right means that the work is true. Okay? So okay. just a stupid argument. No, hold on. See, just already a dumb argument from the guy, right? That's just a dumb argument because I've nailed First of all, nailed more futures than anybody who's ever walked the earth, which is also true. And you won't see any troll ever debunk that because it's true. In a decade, nailed way more futures in every sport than anyone ever has. And, I mean, you've never seen anybody call out what the championship's going to be and the score before the tournament began, as we did many years ago, like back in 2017. Now, what's changed the last two years is... They're not paying tribute to history in the last two tournaments. Historically, they've paid tribute to history. Like they would have paid tribute to 1985 in the 85th tournament if they were doing it the same way they had done it a handful of years ago. They're not doing that anymore. So what we were looking at before the tournament is is a a narrative with a lot more value because UConn paid absolutely nothing. So like this moron comes here and is like, well, you would have heard that. Hey, moron, how many upsets did we hit in the first round? Right, like nearly all of them like we do year after year. Uh, just the other day, did we say? Did I highly advise to take Duke and North Carolina State to upset so that they would meet and then North Carolina State could beat Duke? Yes, I did, which was a way higher payout than had you taken UConn at the beginning of the tournament, which paid three to one. My little parlay the other day paid better than 10 to one. So, uh, again, these are just stupid, trollish arguments to come with. It's just like, dude, you guys are, I mean, these are what trolls do. These are, see, if your best argument's a stupid, trollish argument, it's not a real argument. It just makes you a troll. 
So Troll, now you need to come back and explain, like, how have we nailed five out of the last six Masters before the tournament had began? How, how is it that I said that this year's Super Bowl was going to be all about 19, and then it was? It couldn't have been any more about 19 in the Chiefs. Uh, hit another future before the year. You know, we, we had a handful of futures before this season, but one of them was Chiefs over 49ers. So, uh, again, I want you to address, like, how trying to pick out one miss when you have a whole collection of rights. You know, like last night, four big upsets coming at the end of the baseball night. We liked them all. Uh, again, what what's the point of ignoring all the right and then going, oh, you got one thing wrong, so it must not be true? Don't you see how that makes you a moron? Here, let's go out to Ari Gold, the troll. Okay, your turn, troll. So the whole deal is it's not that, you know, people are not saying that you don't get some right. If, if you watch the uh, sports, uh, sports Gematria video. Okay. It's not that we get some right. Uh, again, Sports Gematria is a fucking loser, right? I, I heard somebody said that he put out three picks in the opening round of the tournament, and he took huge favorites for all three picks. That's called a fucking loser. We nailed all kinds of upsets in the first round of the tournament. I loved Duquesne, who was a huge dog, and Yale, an even huger dog, to upset. And we do this year in and year out. So, no, I'm not going to listen to this bullshit like, oh, you get some right. No. Almost every single day, we win at a high percentage. Almost every single day. You can't find a gambler, a sports gambler, who wins at a high percentage almost every single day. Yesterday was probably the worst day we've had in the last 60 days. And that said, it wasn't that bad. Hit on several upsets at the end of the day. And out of all the baseball games that I circled that I liked, only one didn't come through. And out of those five games, three were underdogs. And one was a significant underdog. So, no, I, I get tired of listening to these trolls. Hey, and how come Ari Gold's in here? How, see, this is how you can see it's a network, right? How come Sports Gematri, who's sitting at home right now, probably has his pants down, probably jerking off, watching my video. Literally, guys, he, he's a fucking weirdo, too. He's probably jerking off right now to, mo, to me, screen recording. How come he doesn't ever come in here and try and make an argument? How come last year, the one time he got caught on a stream with me, they deleted that stream immediately because I made him look like an asshole. Hmm? See, that's what would happen if he called in right now, too. He'd look like an asshole again because that's what he is. He's an asshole. And all of you guys who, who think he has a point because of his, his clipped videos, it, it's just a fucking joke. Just like how this asshole came on here with some dumb arguments. So anyway. Does anybody else want to come in the room like Sports Gematria? Why do you let all these uh, guys come on here and rep your name, but you can't come in here? How come the guy with the lispy voice, you know, who's who's probably got his pants down in the Vaseline out right now, how come you don't come in here and, and argue for yourself? How come all of your how come you don't even use your own voice in your videos? We, we both know why. That lispy little weak ass voice. Why don't you come in here though and, and argue for yourself? Come in here and explain how I'm the fraud when all you do is try and highlight things that are wrong when you'll miss 60 days of coverage of winning. You know, how would that look off your channel? If you're like, well, out of the last 60 days, I could only do one video about Zach having a bad day because the other 59 were good. Huh? How would that look? Would it look like I'm the fraud or would you look like the fraud? If out of the last 60 days were, were winning days on all but one, who would look like the fraud? Uh, again, I remember last year we had a bad day in the tournament, so he rushed out a video right away about how we had a bad day in the tournament that day. That day in the NBA, we went 10-0. and 0. We went like 1-3 in, in college picks, which was bad. You know, I'm not happy about that, but for the day, we were 11-3. and 3. So he put out a video saying I was a fraud and sports gematria was bullshit. It's like, well, actually, it was another big winning day that day, you know? Sure, if you cover the ten, the ten and O, if you ignore the ten and O in, in the NBA on the same day, you can make the argument that that oh yeah, sports decoding sports is bullshit because see Zach went one and three in these four games, but oh I'm, I'm going to leave out the fact that he went ten and O over here. Okay, we we know who the fraud is. That's why he doesn't call in and debate. That's why he sticks to screen recording and just pl you know doing the the biased narrative. His bullshit thing about how we had a losing tournament. No, we didn't. We, we, we won nearly every single day in the tournament, except for in the round of 32 sucked because they just had every favorite win out of, except for in one game, 15 out of 16 favorites won. So we, we didn't get some of our upset narratives that we liked in that round, but neither did anybody else. So, um,
Yeah, exactly. That's also true. I mean, all these trolls who hang around and are just trying to like critique when we get things wrong at sports. It's like, okay, again, the point I'm making is this knowledge is is way more than sports too. We're showing how people are being murdered, how propaganda is being structured, how elections are being rigged. I mean, was there anyone else on the internet who was explaining why Biden was going to be number 46? I, I know that like there were thousands of YouTube channels and everyone thought it was a lock for Trump. I didn't see anyone in the truth community who thought Biden would win. As far as I know, we were the only person explaining why Biden was going to win and, and be number 46, elected exactly 46 weeks after the Pope's birthday. You know, Trump, it is true that I changed my opinion about Trump in, in 2016, but I don't think anyone on the Internet put up a video about why Trump was going to be president before I did. He wasn't even the Republican nominee when I put up the video for why they were going to choose him. Had I just stuck with my initial opinion, it would have been right. but. Again, the reason I came off Trump is because I thought it was getting too ridiculous. He was like doing the the retard thing like an elementary school kid. And I was like, they're not going to put this in the White House. But then they did anyway. And it's all part of the sick joke on this country, too. But anyway, yeah, I mean, did any did anyone else in the, in the world put out a book in the middle of 2020 explaining why the whole thing was a scam and they were going to wind down the pandemic as soon as the year of the tiger came around? Like all of you guys who, who, who want to troll and who knows who you guys are working for. But I mean, don't you guys realize like what pieces of shit you are? Don't you guys realize you're like literally human shit? You're trying to defame and, and you know, ruin the reputation of a person who's been on the right side of history for the last decade. Well, longer than that. But the whole time I've been here explaining what's coming in this nation. You know, in 2015, I was explaining why when 2020 rolled around, if, if this cabal wasn't taken care of, there'd be some more bad shit. There'd be the, the, the next major operation on the world like 9-11, because explain the 19-year cycles. And then they'd tell you it was COVID-19. Uh, again, you look at the, the track record of, of what we forecast, news, president, sports, uh, again, uh, I'll put my work up against anybody's resume. And I don't think anyone's even going to come close. I don't think anyone's even going to come close. Not to mention, broke the code for how it's all rigged. Nobody else did that either. You know, other you look at other channels, it's nothing but opinion. Opinion, opinion, opinion. We're bringing an undeniable code that shows how the system is rigged. So... All right, I'm just checking the chat to see if anybody has anything to add. Yeah, and, and you just see the way that this whole platform works too. It's just like, if you leave a comment on my videos, your comment's likely to get deleted today. If you leave a like on the video, your like's likely to be removed. They do all these things to make sure that these videos don't track in the algorithm, that the work doesn't get out. You look at my trolls video that he makes, it hardly has any views, but it'll have like 500 comments. It's like, hmm. I mean, back in the day when, when, when I got views, you know, average video would have minimum 500 comments. But uh, again, it's like the algorithm works to promote the troll and at the same time works to censor us. So that should also tell you all you need to know. Peter Higgs has died and didn't yesterday they just fire up CERN. Here, let me see real quick. Is this breaking news? Seven hours ago, so earlier today. Okay, so they fired up CERN for the first time yesterday. Uh, again, the CERN, CERN's been searching for that God particle. Or maybe was it years ago that they said they discovered it? But okay, that's where he fits in. So CERN went on, on. Oh, look at that. He died. He died the day of the eclipse, the day they fire up CERN. See, that stuff is just sick right there, man. 
because they CERN hadn't been CERN hadn't operated in a long time, but then they had to do it the day of the eclipse. And okay, he died 51 days before his upcoming birthday, which means he died what 300 and I can't think right now. Hold on, let me let me just run it real quick. May 29th to April 8th. But yeah, the thing that's blatant about this is just dying the day that CERN gets started back up. He's got the same birthday as JFK. Dead 315 days later, 45 weeks later. We were just about rituals in 45. Looks like a ritual, dead the day of CERN. And... Okay, it says on July 4th, 2012, CERN announced the discovery of the bosun at the Large Hadron Collider. So, again, this was the thing that he theorized. So, yeah, this God particle was way back in 2012. Again, that Da Vinci Code series made a point about this, this particle and the Illuminati being after it. And, you know, I guess in light of the Illuminati piece with the Da Vinci Code, remember, Illuminati's got that 48 because the day he died, fourth month, eighth day. Date of the eclipse. Um, here, let's check his name, Dumachi, real quick. Him dying at age 94, that's a big Roman Catholic church number. Um, again, if you've seen the Da Vinci Code, you know it has to do with the Illuminati and the Catholic church. His full name, Peter Ware Higgs, is 80, just like Bavarian Illuminati is. Bavarian Illuminati. 80. 80. And here, just his first and last name. Oh, look at that. Peter Higgs, 48, right? Peter Higgs, 48, dead on 48. <laughs> the day they fire back up CERN for the first time in forever. Here, here, let's get the trolls feedback. Uh, so, troll, what do you what do you think about Peter Higgs, whose name equals forty eight, who's connected to CERN, dying on the day CERN gets fired back up on four eight? Is that is that a is that a fraud then to show that his name equals forty eight? Oh, I think that's pretty interesting. Okay, thanks. All right, all right, yeah, it is pretty interesting, and um, I'm sure there's a lot more to it. I have to look more into. Uh, the last time CERN was fired up, but I know that it, it had been a minute. Uh, so here, here was the news yesterday, April 8th, CMS experiment at CERN measures a key parameter of the standard model. Um, Okay. Yeah, I'll read about more all of this, but I, I think this ritual is pretty obvious. I think it's pretty obvious why he died the day he did. And yeah, the next thing to do is just look at the last time CERN was activated. And um, actually, hold on. I, I want to check one other thing about him. So July 4th, 2012, isn't it funny that it was on 7-4 of all days? I want to see from his birthday to, uh, hold on real quick. May 29th, 2012 to July 4th, 2012. He would have been... Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. Let me check something real quick. He was born in 1929, so he would have turned 83 that year. So he was 83 years old at the time of the discovery. Yeah. 
It was 36 days after his 83rd birthday. Hmm. Yeah, I'll look more into this, but yeah, for, for now, the, the short takeaway. Name is 48, dead on 48, dead on the day they fire back up CERN. Okay. What's up, 208 Productions? Hey, so you remember last year when CERN fired up in July? Uh, I, I forget. So it was last year in July 2023? Yeah, I think it was July 6th. And I remember I was doing some research. I did a post on Twitter back then. And some things I found jump out right now. I just went and looked back at it. This guy, Peter Higgs, his birthday is 529. And the CERN, the name of CERN, like if you spell it out, I forget exactly what it is. It's But like the full name of it equals 529. And this guy was born on 529. And he was 93 last year when they fired it back up. And 93 is the big sun number. And then he's dead of the day of the eclipse, right? So... I wonder how many days ago that was. I believe it was July 6th, if I'm not mistaken. Apparently. This is the European name for it. Here, right, probably the it's English, the, uh, yeah, English one might be 529. Um, My fault. European Council for Nuclear Research is the English version of it. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, I see that. 529, you're right. His birthday's May 29th. Interesting. And and he was 93 last year, and then that there's a book called The God Particle that came out in the year 93 about his research. And then he was 93 years old, big part of the ritual last year when CERN fired back up. And then now he's dead the day of the eclipse. And 93 is a big number with the sun. The uh, the number 529, it's 23 to the second power, so 23 squared. And he was 83 when they found the God particle, which is the 23rd prime number. So that's interesting, too. Yeah, um... He went to King's College. The word King itself is 23, like LeBron wears 23. So go figure. Could you... Um... Could you look? Could you look up la, la, the date last year that it that it they they fired it back up? I'm I'm pretty sure it was July sixth. I'm just curious, like how far how long ago that was? Because it's probably fitting to the ritual. Uh, twenty twenty three. Twenty three again. It looks like. Maybe it was July. Was it the fifth then? Six it was the sixth, right? Because I think George, George, like George Bush, was a big part of the sync with it too. Like, if it was July sixth, that would have been a year to the day of the uh, the Georgia Guidestones coming down. I just tuned in and I seen like you were just starting to talk about this, so I, and I remembered from last year that kind of I was diving like, kind of deep into it. No, so I'm back I'll also find a website that has a log of all the days that CERN ran. Um, you know, uh, I think the hit show that's on Netflix right now is also about the particle collider. Uh, three body problem. I haven't seen it, but I, I, I was reading about what it's about. And it's something to do with uh, particle collider. So I might also tie in with what's going on. Well, yeah, I can. I don't want to take up the, too much of the show's time, so I could find. I can find this stuff out if if we can't find it real quick right here on my own time. You know. Hold on. What is it says? CERN comprises twenty three member states. There's that twenty three again. That's interesting. CERN was established in fifty four. We know all about the Jesuits in fifty four. That was the year of the uh, first Bilderberg Group as well. Um, it was formed September 29th, 1954, 929 chapters in the Old Testament. And they say that it sits on the uh, seat of Satan. 
like right in the same, the ancient exact same part of the world. As what? The uh, they call it the seat of Satan. It's the like of Satan. Okay, I didn't know that. It's I did not know that. I should be well more prepared to tell you like the actual name. I, I just I know that's like another name they call it. He died 192 days after the anniversary of CERN's establishment, or you could also say he died on the 193rd day of his age. Skull and Bones is 192 years old right now, and Skull and Bones is modeled after the Bavarian Illuminati. So Skull and Bones has the Illuminati connection going with 48, like we talked about in his name. But 193 is also the 44th prime, and again, 44 is one of those fateful killing numbers. So that's probably not an accident. But yeah, I, I really like your observation about how the the name of CERN is 529, which goes with his birthday. And he's the guy who theorized this particle that they supposedly discovered. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share that because it was t too much to type in the chat. Like, I would rather just say it, you know, so. Okay. Okay. All right. Appreciate it, man. Gr great contribution. Yep. Thank you. Yep. You have a good night. All right. Take care. All right. And our resident teenager, we call him troll bait. The trolls just love to uh, fixate on this guy. It's weird how 40 some year old trolls are constantly obsessed with this teenager and trying to attack him online too. It's like, man, 40 some and attacking a 19 year old. Well, what's up, Sebastian? <laughs> hey, man, what's up? I just uh, having a, a toast and another toast to Greg just got arrested again. <laughs> Poor guy just can't help himself. <laughs> DUI guy. Um, and How do you I just, even know that? How do you even know that he got arrested? <laughs> Sage Zero found his mugshot online from uh, April 2nd, so he got arrested again. But, uh, yeah, I just had to I had to get a toast to this. And, um, you know, Sports Gematria, he's just getting worse and worse. I was, like, reading his comments. He's, like, hearting all these comments saying that people need to kill you. But then he, he'll, on the videos, he's, like, like this, like, supposed moral person. And he, like, tries to take some kind of moral high ground as if yeah, that's you're what, saying that's all these the terrible yeah, things. No, the, the, that's how the, the biggest pieces of shit are, like, that guy. He's a pathetic person so. yeah it's like oh zach said that he wanted to, that he thinks some people should die and then he's going in the comments and harding all these comments saying the same thing about you it's like uh, you can't really play the whole moral card when you're saying that well uh, he's also like in cuts his streams when he's ranting about killing sweet lady posting exactly. laughing emojis so it's like <laughs> oh oh so this is okay but yeah. then, that's right you can just see he's just a piece of shit he doesn't mean anything he he's, pretends he's about yeah, it's just constant lies, and uh, you know, f I I know I didn't make that video on April second that I promised. It got delayed. It's gonna come out on four twenty, at four twenty p.m. So everybody can look out for that. These trolls are not gonna be too happy about it. But um, yeah, I, I uh, just wanted to say that. Well, I mean, you can do that. It's only gonna it's only gonna make them even more motivated to keep trolling. <laughs> but if that's what you want to do, go. Well, for I it. mean, they're still going. They're like they've been going after Richard for like months, and he hasn't even addressed them since like last year. So they they I see them yeah, attacking. I know, it's just like severe mental illness over in. They attack show. RPM Trey. Like I feel like RPM Trey, even without the guns, would just squash cuts with his pinky. You know, like he could like fold oh. them up like a origami really bird. Five foot two, so I mean, yeah, the average male would squash cuts. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, he's just like completely lunatic. He's threatening me, threatening uh, RPM Trey, threatening you. I mean, I can't think of like worse people to threaten, but you know, I mean, here he goes. But yeah, that's all I want to say. I just wanted to give a cheers to uh, to Greg being arrested again. So yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll let you get back to it. All right. So well, since you looked it up, is it a DUI again? Did the guy get an? I DUI? I don't know. I'm I'm looking it up right now, but I'll, I'll probably show it on my channel at some point. I'll I'll find I'll find the link. Okay. That I can share it with people. But yeah, I'll I'll see you guys. All right. All right. Later. Oh, buddy. oh. I've actually I forgot something. Um. So uh, the um. It, you should get your uh, your wife um, on Amazon. There's this stuff, cod liver and own oil. It's like a yellow can. 
um and it's like 50 bucks for a pack of 20 but it's it's cod liver in its own oil it's i've I, that's the one that i get and it's really good um and it's really good for you know like developing uh babies and stuff like that and um you know i i take it and when i have it like when i eat it it's it's it tastes pretty good it tastes um it's not really very fishy um it i just like feel like my mind feels more clear um it also makes me like really horny um but it it it, it has like a lot of nutrition in it so it kind of like boosts you you know you feel like more energy and a lot of stuff because it has a lot of nutrition but um yeah it's it's i wanted to say that and um yeah i'm also looking forward to um to doing the radio show the podcast because i i got the mic i'm using it right now so I'm all looking right forward to that all right all right buddy but yeah yeah look into that that stuff's really good it makes you feel really good and it has a lot of nutrition okay all, all right, right see you, you man appreciate it thanks All right. Well, I think we can leave it there. I don't see any other requests for stories to get caught up with. And um, I see on CNN's front page, more uh, destruction of Boeing, the purposeful takedown of Boeing stock. And it, it might, it, watching what they're doing with Boeing, man, it might be a countdown until they, they escalate the next war because you bet your bottom dollar that as far as Boeing stock has fallen down, from all these negative headlines that have been by the numbers, it's going to skyrocket back up once the war machine kicks into the next gear because Boeing's one of the biggest military contractors in the whole world. So that's why they were so instrumental in 9-11. Big fuel spill on Highway 85, huh? You must be, I'm guessing, somewhere out near Atlanta. I guess could be anywhere, but... It's the big city. 85 runs through. 85th tournament just concluded. Is it another ritual? I remember how the uh, the freeway collapsed in Atlanta and they blamed it on a crackhead after the Falcons collapsed in the Super Bowl, giving up 25-point lead on 2-5. Gene Splice says, anything on the Wisconsin Apple River stabbing on Lawn Crime Channel. Hold on, am I hitting holding the mic again after I switch? I don't even need this mic because I switched the audio. Ah, I love to do that. Wisconsin Apple River stabbing. I, I don't know. Let me see. Wisconsin Apple River stabbing. Is this a new story? Apple River stabbing trial. Nicolo Miu. Day seven. Did this begin on April 3rd then? Or well, maybe it began before that. Well, look how old he is. He's 54. Funny how that number keeps coming up. We've been talking about it a ton lately with the whole Diddy thing at age 54. Another correct prediction, mind you, because we said this before he turned 54 out. It was going to be a rough year for him. He paralleled how it could be like R. Kelly. Now he's being prosecuted by the same lawyer from Georgetown, the nation founded by 50, or the uh, university founded by 54 year old John Carroll. Uh, says he stabbed five people on the river, killing 17 year old Isaac Schumann. We know the word kill is 17. So that was the one, the one person he killed was a 17 year old. And again, just. You know, just makes you wonder. Some of these made-for-TV stories. What was that, the Murdaugh murders a year ago? Murdaugh. The victims range from ages 17 to 24. We got this story in 2024. They are from Wisconsin and Minnesota. Wisconsin's got that 44 Gematria-like kill. Um... saying he stabbed him in self-defense. Well, I'm curious when this happened. Um, does this thing have a Wikipedia? Here's the timeline. This is what I need. July 30th, 2022, 9.30 a.m., Prior Lake, Minnesota. Th 
3.47 p.m. First call to 911. It's funny it's 47 minutes after the hour because the first ever 911 call in history was on the 47th day of the year in 1968. Uh, all right, so it, it, it all went down on this day, July 30th. And you can see that that date numerology for that day was 79. It's a, that's a murder date. 7 plus 30 plus 20 plus 22 is 79. It was also a date with a lesser numerology of 59. 59 is the 17th prime going with the 17-year-old was killed. Um, it's harder to do these things if they're not celebrities because I don't have like, I unless it's out there. Let me see if I can find the guy's date of birth. Nicola Miu. Let me see if I can find his date of birth. This says he was born in December of 69. The trial began on April Fool's Day. That's suspicious to me in itself right there. Um... It happened on the 211th day of the year, the 47th prime, going with that phone call being made to police at 47 minutes after the hour. And what is 47? Let me see real quick, just measuring from the date it happened, uh, the day the trial started, and as well as him taking the, uh, the chair. It's 87 weeks. So the trial began 87 weeks after the stabbing. That's a justice number. Justice has that 87. I see his name is 102 and 48. Look at Justice. 87 weeks later in 2024. Um, what do they call this thing? The Apple River Stabbing. Apple River's got the 59. Again, the, so it was on 79 date numerology, like murder 79. It was on a lesser date numerology of 59. Apple River's 59. And again, 59 is the 17th prime. It's like how the word Freemasonry equals 59 and Mason equals 17. And modern Freemasonry is created in 1717, 59 years for this nation. Um. I don't know. It looks like news by the numbers to me. Apple River stabbing, 88. And look, from the stabbing to him being on the trial is 88 weeks and days later. I don't know. It just all looks like news by the numbers to me. Um, the other thing that's 88 with the courtroom is the word judge has the 88 like gavel. Remember, judge and gavel are the exact same in all four ciphers. I just realized what time it is. I got to wrap this thing up because I got to make sweet lady dinner. Um, so, yeah, it, it looks like, uh, I don't know, it looks like news by the numbers. I mean, it's, it's stuff that's in the news, you just decode it and you're like, wow, it just lines up way too perfectly. I mean, yeah, there is an organic side to this. Like, occasionally you're aware of this knowledge, you'll see something like happen in your life that's just mind blowing and you're like, whoa, how did it work out by the numbers like that? But, Every it's like your every day of your life isn't that way. It's not like those types of things are happening every day. You look at what's in the news every single day. Everything is like perfectly structured this way. And here's the one uh, again. It, it was years ago. You know, for, for for all the for all the people out there that that think the work's bullshit. Uh, again, have you helped anybody ever make over three hundred thousand dollars off a future in your life? I mean, I, I helped a a guy make over three hundred fifty thousand dollars by parlaying two things together. We call it the World Series dead on. Why it would end in game five and be synced with Super Bowl 53. But yeah, that guy, he had me come out to dinner and he, he brought his daughter out. And um, his daughter was a lawyer. And she wanted to know more about this because she was pretty sure that what, what, from what she was learning from her father, who was learning from me, she thought what was going on with, with trials she was involved with, she thought, thought certain lawyers were lining things up by the numbers. And so she wanted my take on it. 
and if I thought that there was, she wanted she wanted to know if I if I thought that this could be possible or if she was just like <laughs> becoming paranoid about things. But I explained to her, I said, you know, I mean, there's a belief that like this is the way God operates. So if people are trying to play God or get things more on their side, they might be lining them up this way too. And again, it's it's no secret, uh, you know, you go in a courtroom, you know, you know. There, there's a lot of a certain religion that, that is in the, the legal lawyer business. Most divorce lawyers are of a certain religion. Most prosecutors just happen to be of a certain religion. And again, this, this knowledge of letters and numbers is also connected to a certain religion. So, um, yeah, I don't think these things are a coincidence. Not at all. There's video of the stabbing. Okay, I'd have to check that out. Um, I, I don't know if that means anything, though. Does that mean anything, that there's video of a stabbing? I mean, do we not live in the age of Hollywood? I'd have to check it out. So, I mean, we li even live now in the age of deep fakes. You can just make up a video. It doesn't even have to happen at all. You don't even need actors. <laughs> this question, well, have you ever seen anything good in the news? I mean, the news is just nothing but negativity and fear and paranoia. And so that's also the point of exposing just like, again, like I didn't need to do this. I already knew the news was bullshit when I was a kid. You know, I didn't need to figure out Gematria to understand what was going on in the world. The reason I figured this out was try to wake up all the dummies that just want to keep watching the TV and letting it control their mind. And you see most of those dummies, even though we can show all that we show today, they still want to ignore the truth and just turn on the TV and, and let it dictate what's on their brain. It's sad, but um, not everybody. So, Yeah, exactly. I mean, and 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 one of my oldest videos was was uh, me sitting in front of my TV at my old house and playing a clip of an old documentary about how all of the original news anchors on the news were all military trained. And again, everything about this nation at the end of the day is for for military strategic purposes. So, I, I mean, why why did they have all all military trained people to be the original broadcasters for every news network? Again, I mean, it's the same reason this nation's always constantly at war and the same reason the news is lying to you about everything and, you know, leading you into the next needless war or or now we don't even fight wars. Now we just pay for them with the taxpayer and we have, uh, you know, Ukraine fight for us or Israel fight for us or, you know, et, et cetera. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this comment here, too, is, is the problem. People just aren't smart. Listen, you guys, if, 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 if America was smart, 9-11 wouldn't have worked because 9-11 made absolutely zero sense. The way the buildings came down made no sense. I mean, the average American still doesn't know about Building 7. How do, how do you not know about Building 7 20-some years later? Because you don't ask any questions. We have non-questioning, non-thinking, just believing people. That's the problem. And also, then we also have this society of just like, I don't know, just people don't know how to cooperate either. You know, just we're just always fighting over everything. So anyway, I do got to wrap it up there. Hey, shout out to Dem Daria Gematri. I, I, I'm glad to see you out there, Daria. I, I haven't seen your name in a minute, so I hope you're doing all right. But yeah, we'll leave it there for now. And uh We'll be back soon. And until next time.